the South African team. Don't worry checking out that uh, side for too long. It's exactly the same side that they've been using match in, match out. And it's a good team too. Brilliant in the field. Look out for Callis and Cronier and Rhodes. Look out for Cullinan and some experience down the bottom of the order there. The West Indies, one change right at the top. Clayton Lambert's in the side for Williams. The rest of the team is as usual. And, uh, of course, the batsmen are keeping an eye on those fast bowlers. The head-to-head, -head, there we are. Played ten. They've each won five. There is absolutely nothing in it. South Africa versus the West Indies in the final. We're in for a humding up. The uh, action is about to get underway out in the centre. And uh, he is a very dangerous man. W Wallace is out there with Lambert. And uh, Fido Wallace, we've seen him smash it to every corner of the ground. Clayton Lambert is uh, joining him today. They've dropped Williams, as we said. And uh, I think everyone agrees that uh, the beginning of this match is going to be so important. And that man there holds the key to it in his hands. Well, it looks as if the South Africans are going to spring a surprise straight up. They've got the spinner on. It looks as if Simcox is going to bowl the first over. Oh, big appeal for LBW. First ball, this is unbelievable. In the commentary box, Ravi Shastri, and with him, Michael Holding. Thank you, Tony. And good afternoon to our viewers, wherever you are. It's all set for this Wills International Cup final, and South Africa springing a surprise here by starting off with Simcox. He really is a character, good competitor. He'll relish this challenge. This is a big match. He's on his way to Wallace. Now, this is a very dangerous opening pair the West Indies have put out here. Lambert and Wallace. Yes, it's a very good line and a good length as well. Let's get the ball up to the bat. Swept away this time, but straight to the man at Deep Square Leg. Nicky Boyer, the fielder. So the first runs on the board for the West Indies. So Steve Elworthy here taking up the proceedings from the far end. He bowled so well the other evening. It really gave that the kitchen sink. And this time he's away with four. Over pitched and Wallace put that away. So boundary to end the second over. It's five for no loss. Swept away. There's a man at short fine leg. They'll still pick up a single. Cullen on the fielder. Not quite timing that one, Wallace. We'll have to wait for the Empire signal here. Leg by signal went by Steve Dunn. That's a good line struck on the pad, but they're running. It seemed there was some bat on it as well. Yes, no signal from the Empire. So many times we see this, this low rabbi, and it happens to be pad before bat. But once it's both bat and pad, as we can see there, that was pad before bat. Once it's both pad and bat, the umpires always give the, um, the batsmen the benefit of the doubt. Oi. So Simcox pulling his third over. So the run's still coming in singles off Simcox. Interesting technique from Lambert. Stands way outside the leg stump and then just as the bowler's arm goes up, walks across the stumps. And he's gone for the big one. 
That stays hit. That's six. Typical of Clayton Lambert. He's not afraid to hit against the speed once he thinks he has gotten close enough to the pitch of the ball. And that has gone a long way. So it's up in the air, Simcox coming underneath it, and he's taken. Lambert's been dismissed here. That one coming on to him a little quicker than he expected. And South Africa have drawn first blood. This is a good wicket for South Africa. Lambert was the man that more than likely would have given Simcox some problems. Trying to hook, but the ball was onto him a lot quicker than he expected. A very simple catch for Simcox. South Africa strike, an early blow. And bright sunshine greets Chandra Paul as he comes out to the middle. Disciplined start by the South Africans. So first runs here for Chandra Paul. Gets off the mark with a single. but he'll only get a single for it. Now that's a cracking shot from Philo Wallace. Picked up the length quickly. Really smashed that pass mid-wicket. That was it very powerfully indeed. That's a good comeback by Elwadi. It's up in the air. John T. Rhodes in pursuit. And what an attempt. I just get the feeling, though, had he not attempted for that catch, the man running in from third man could have got it pretty easily. Callis was running in, but Rhodes had called for it. Well, the thing is, the Callis call because he certainly was the man in a better position to take this catch. He's coming towards the ball. John DeRoge is going away fr from, from the actual flight of the ball. And certainly, Callis would have been a man. But you can see there, he stops. John DeRoge perhaps did call for it. Callis perhaps did not say anything. Difficult to know who did the calling and who, exactly who took responsibility for it. for two here and get it quite comfortably so two to end the over I just can't afford to uh, give away chances there's no doubt at all that Callis should have been left to make that catch down the ground over the top of mid off didn't quite get it in the middle of the bat but it'll still go for four refuse to get bogged down four good balls and the West Indians do the one thing that they know best attack straight down the ground whoa he hit some hard that was a bludgeon down the ground there was no finesse about that one he stand up and smashed it 
This is very powerful indeed. Not classical, but straight off the middle. Elworthy, valiant attempt. I think he's pretty pleased he didn't get his hand to it. Would have taken it with him. Yeah, so you perhaps need a helmet for Chandapur, but that's for batting. This man hits him so straight and so hard. one's gone way over the mid-wicket boundary that's a six that's the second six of the innings Wallace is having a great tournament and now he's turning on in the final well it's a great shot it really does swing the bat hard beautifully timed beautifully picked up not much swing for Elworthy anymore and he's just picked up the line and length so quickly, Philo Wallace, and just deposited that over mid-wicket. Well, well played. It's a misfield. It's four. It's another four. Best over for the West Indies so far. brings up the 50 for the West Indies. Perhaps we should be giving Chandapal the benefit of the doubt there. Let's see if we can pick up the angle of his bat as he steers this one away. Was it the edge or was it intended? I think it's a bit of each, actually. He does like to angle it away, and uh, I would say that's an edge. steered away on the offside again he plays that shot through the offside well it's running away down to the boundary the South Africans are after it they'll settle for two no they're going back for the third good running <laughs> 54 for one and looks as if we're going to have a change now Nicky Boge is uh, going to be bowling his left arm orthodox spinners looks as if he's going to start from over the wicket is he Come on, come on, boy. Watching him, yeah? Just a slightly slower delivery. He's got it away for a one. Swept away. There's a fieldsman down there. That area is covered. So a good start. a single from Wallace. I don't think any bowler will settle for a single from Wallace. <laughs> One of the problems, of course, when Simcox has bowled through his 10 is that he doesn't get to bowl to Lara, and I think that's uh, one of the, the things that the South Africans would have hoped for, that uh, he could exploit the rough outside the left-handers off stump bowling to Lara. And, uh, if he gets through all 10, and, uh, the West Indies are only one down, that's not going to happen. But it's a very good effort, bearing in mind he's only allowed two out. It's well bowled. Homing in on leg stump there. Simcox into position straight away behind the stumps. Wallace 33. Chander Paul on strike. Shipping it away into the onside again. I'll settle for one here. Now then, Wallace is about to face Boje. He's bowled a tidy over. He's first over. I can't believe that Wallace is going to be hanging around for too long. One gets the feeling if you bog him down a bit, one of two things is going to happen. He's either going to hit you out of the ground or it's going to go up in the air and he's going to get caught. Or possibly dropped. Oh, he likes that sweep shot. He likes to play that sweep shot. That wasn't a good delivery. Back for the second comes Wallace. Or a 
good deep square leg. He's got it. It's six. It's over the top. Yep. He cannot be kept quiet for long. He refuses to get, be kept quiet for long. Well, I'm not sure this is off the middle even. That's how strong this man is. I think it's a top edge. It doesn't really come cleanly off the middle, in my opinion. We'll soon see. It's not really off the middle of the bat, and it's still gone for six. It's a bit awesome, really. You think that he doesn't have to hit it off the middle of the bat, and it still goes out the park. So 69 for one, the West Indies. Wallace on 41, Chanderpaul 16. Simcox and Boje doing a great job with the ball. The two spinners bowling in tandem here are nailing the West Indians down. Chanderpaul. Down the wicket he goes. Fingertip stuff there from Simcox. It's covered, though. Nicely chopped away, he's so strong, right on top of that one, it's running away down towards the fence, two runs off Simcox. Oh, what a catch! Well, for a second, I thought he'd caught it. I can't believe this bloke, just watch this bit of feeling, this is unbelievable. Absolutely brilliant, that's goalkeeper style almost had it well he's been put down twice but uh, well this would have been a miracle catch as well just watch him take off beautiful positioning it was just hit so hard at him just look at this here we go again he's going one way and he, he almost looked as if he had it in his hands didn't he Played away on the onside. Quite happy to pick up the ones. Well, that was a bad cricket. Feel it so well to prevent a single and then throw it away. thing about bowling an off spinner like uh, Simcock uh, straight away most people will think well once his bowl is 10 at the end of this over it's a pity they'd like to use him later on in the innings but they do have another spinner Derek Crooks is quite a good off spinner uh, he's just having a rest he's a bit old job here keeping the West Indies to below four runs per over we saw the West Indies doing the si similar thing to India well his tournament is over it's been over now for the last three days because the West Indies have been involved and of course Steve Buckner from the West Indies not allowed to officiate when the West Indies are involved souvenir photographs that's what he has been placed to do been brought into the attack we know he can bowl medium pace but it seems as if he's going to be bowling some spin Jeffrey hits it very powerfully indeed yeah I'd have been much keener to bring the off spinner on I like to have two different types of bowler bowling 
just creates different problems for the batsman. You get one at each end very similar. The batsman can use the same type of shot. throughout this tournament Pillow Wallace three knocks three times has had to do the same thing raise that bat gets it through on this occasion is still struggling to get maintain that four runs per over mark just below again well, that's a good blow that should go it does full toss by Mike Rindle and Sandra Paul puts it away well that's a shocking delivery when you work so hard to get all the pressure on the batsman and it may be because uh, although Rindell's bowling uh, spinners, he does bowl mainly left-arm seamers. And he's very much, uh, I suspect, an occasional bowler of this sort of stuff. He's only doing it because of the type of player that he's bowling against. a single on this occasion oh, that was a shocker wasn't it what sort of delivery was that two horrible deliveries got put away for four 94 for one Not surprised that Hansi Cronier was having a word with him. He's saying, where did they come from? We can't keep pressure on if you bowl four good balls and two really horrible sloppy ones like that. shot for him I think it's just pressure and frustration look how he stays back and tries to pull a goodish length delivery I'm afraid that's out he did him right bang in front back on his stumps difficult not to give that out at all a new batsman West Indies captain Brian Lara strides to the crease played a very professional knock yesterday but it's a different day today wants to get himself in first good pitch he's got time to play in innings nearly 27 overs 26 overs doesn't want to get out before he gets in oh, it's worth a shout you won't get it though on the front foot quite away but just play the ball around, get himself 15, 20 runs, then he can look to play the great shots. That's it, get off the mark. Coming back with a second, well, that was well run. One bowling change here, Terry Crooks, the off-spinner being introduced into the attack. 24 matches for him, 3 for 30 against Pakistan his best and a pretty decent uh, economy rate as well 4.65 but this match is nicely poised at this stage West Indies going along at four runs per over that'll be 
for the 100 coming up for the West Indies here. Wallace very quick to spot that short delivery and put that one away. Yes, new, new to the crease, Derek Crooks, and he's just bowled that one a little bit too short, and Philo Wallace has picked it up quickly. Didn't hit it cleanly off the middle, but he's so strong, he's got it away for four. What a classical pull. And again, the result the same. Perfect placement and consecutive boundaries for Wallace. This is the acceleration the West Indies are looking for, and there's a big consultation between the captain and uh, Derek Crooks. He really has to get the line right. It's more the length. It was uh, such a variation in length. One full that he's able to put away, and one short. Both of them gone for four, so just too much variation in length. He's got to be very precise. Philo Wallace has been in for quite a long time now. He's got 62. Pushed through a little quicker through the air. So single to end the over there. 11 runs coming off that last over, and at the halfway stage, the West Indies 107 for two. Another single here. That's better. Very important that Lara settles down there. His presence in the middle is so important for the West Indies. That went very quickly to that man at... spot this time and he's hit it really well that's six Barry Richards was mentioning a little while earlier there's a big gap on the onside between the man just wide of deep mid wicket and long on and Lara has picked the spot nicely he yes, just knows that uh, Nicky Boya is going to drift down that leg side he's trying to bowl into his pad so he's got no swing of the arms but he's created the momentum by running down the wicket and he's really struck that one well safe shot even if he'd miss it a little bit there's no one out there so he would have got four anyway now that's disappeared over the side screen such a powerful striker of the cricket ball Philo Wallace This third six. This is a great shot. No doubt about it. He doesn't need the momentum of going forward, but he's created it anyway by dancing down the wicket. He knows. Look at the smile on that face. It's come right off the middle. You can feel it in your hands, and he's happy. That really was a superb shot. Lovely follow through. It's just created so much momentum. And look how far it's gone. Way up into the stand. Beautiful shot.
Tonight on Fox Sports News, all today's Olympic highlights with Australia's kayakers adding to our medal tally and the men's marathon wrapping up the 2000 Games. Mark Viduka bangs in a double to help Leeds United pass Tottenham in the English Premier League and Jake Patterson takes second place at the Billabong Pro Surfing in California. Get the complete picture tonight on Fox Sports News at 7 o'clock Eastern Daylight Saving Time. It's a wonder how they defy the laws of gravity, how they taunt the forces of nature, how they do the impossible. They might be a little crazy, but they're a breed who feed on sheer adrenaline and just love to entertain. Join the adrenaline junkies and see how wonders never cease in the all-new Extreme, weekdays at 5 on Fox Sports. Laurie Daly, Raiders legend, New South Wales skipper and Australian hero. Laurie's phenomenal career is now being celebrated by this beautifully presented limited edition collector's item. Call 1-800-151-201 now. And for just $295 plus $35 postage and handling, you can order one of only 1,000 autographed fully framed prints. Blazed in glory. Commemorating the achievements of one of Australia's rugby league greats, Laurie Daly. On Big Time Boxing, Love More to Do the Panther. Deadly, accurate, lightning fast. Takes on the slick Argentinian Victor Paz. Live and exclusive. Friday night, 7.30, Fox Sports 2. West Indies, 125 for three. So Carl Hooper, the new man out there, because this is what happened a little while earlier. It's just sneaked behind, and uh, just one wonders if it hadn't just sneaked the wickets, whether it had been given a wide. That's how close it is, and that's how far the line is between a good ball and a bad one. Yes, I think on the, that occasion, if the ball had not hit the stumps, there would have been a stumping chance as well for the keeper. Gets his foot right across, which takes his head across for Brian Lyra. Means he falls over when he plays the shot. And uh, West Indies now to 26 overs, 126 for three. gets out now in the West Indies. They haven't scored all that quickly, but while this, this man is at the crease, anything can happen. Eight fours and three sixes already. And if he bats through to 50 overs, they'll get a very, very big total. to end the over. Look for two and get it. Again, he was trying to blast this one out of the ground. But the ball was a little too close to him. Straight back. Pass the bowler. Could be out caught here. Just getting his hands to it. The boundary resulting for Wallace. I grindle the fielder there. I think he thought it was going to go past him, Mike Grindle. And suddenly he found the ball was there. He thrust out his right hand, which is not his natural hand. Beautifully struck. Just curves in the air towards Grindle. I think he could have got two hands to that in the end. He thought it was going quicker than it was. Shot. He's just 
just picked it up again. Derek Crooks bowling from over the wicket. Hooper doing the right thing, yeah. Playing sensibly, giving as much of the strike as possible to Wallace at this stage. strike now Phil Wallace yes. that's in the air and another six just for a moment you thought you'd top edged it this man is on fire Phil Wallace well he did top edge it but he's so strong, that's come off nowhere near the middle. Six bowlers have been used so far. Fournier just starting a spell. Crooks, a little expensive after picking up that wicket of Lala. Three overs for 33. That's good cricket by Hooper. She knows the camera is on her, she's blushing. And always brings the crowd to their feet. John T. Rhodes nearly took an absolutely magnificent catch earlier on. And he's into the action again. It's been a good over so far from Cronier. Just two runs have come off it. So tidy start by the South African captain. One five six for three. Oh, good shot. He's pulled that into the gap. One bounce into the fence for four. Well, I think he's just getting better and better. He's taken his score to 97 now. And, uh, well... Apart from that little indiscretion we were talking about a minute ago, it's been a wonderful innings. Certainly has been a very good knock by Phil Wallace. Elworthy there, knowing that he likes to drive, has decided to pitch that one a bit shorter, but much too short. Phil Wallace is also a pretty good puller. Kept his eyes on it and placed it beautifully. Yes, don't go far away. It could be next ball at this hundred. That's it. Beautifully played through the extra cover boundary, down to the fence for four. That's a wonderful innings, Phil Wallace. Take a bow. Beautifully played. An excellent knock by Phil Wallace. Almost a runner ball. 103 balls. As a matter of fact, 98 balls rather. 103 is a strike rate. But that's 101. Short outside, off stump, well played. He's cut it away. It's a fast outfield and it's four. Kyle Hooper waiting for the bad ball and when it arrived, he dealt with it appropriately. Well, he certainly is a class player, Kyle Hooper. And when he's batting well, he will punish any bowler. That certainly was a bad delivery. Short outside the off stump and there is no man on the point boundary. Third man had no chance. A little bit slower. Again, good placement into the gap. This one won't go to the fence. Well fielded. The West Indies 170 for three. Another comes to 
comfortable single to Hooper. Will he come back this time? I don't think so. That's well done by the keeper. Straight down the ground. Mid-on's in position. One bounce to him. Get that one too, straight down the ground. Mid off and mid on again, getting peppered out there. Always uh, hit that one over the top. That's well played. It's running away down towards the boundary. That man came in, and so he's just lofted it over the top of the infield. So that brings up the 50 partnership, and uh, they've scored the 50 in only 42 balls. has made 103 of 101 balls and he's outstumped. This is excellent work. Just lifting that foot and he's gone. Mark Boucher did it brilliantly there. Slipping the ball down the leg side and Wallace lost his balance and lost his wicket. It's 180 for four the West Indies. So Keith Arthurton is uh, the new batsman. He's a left-hander, and uh, he's already had some success in this tournament. And look at this stomping again from Mark Boucher. Ball pitching outside leg stump. Wasn't called a wide. Lots of times I've seen those being called wides. Wouldn't have mattered as far as the stomping is concerned. It still would have been a wicket. Excellent work. Just let's have another look at that, um, that little injury that he received yesterday. The, um, I think he got, um, he was not able to sight the ball as went over the shoulder. Did it just deflect? And look at that whack on the nose. And uh, of course, down he went. And uh, just for a second, we thought he'd broken his nose. That's the result of it. The nose looks pretty good, but um, a fair bit of bruising underneath his uh, his eye. You can do that to Simcox because his arm's gone. And Callis is a new bowler. I never thought we'd see too much of Callis today, but he has been brought into the, the attack belatedly. And that one uh, down the ground for one. Continuing his spell, and that's well played. Nice and oh, it's a wonderful shot. The fine legs a bit square, and uh, it needed to be glanced fine, and it was executed beautifully. Have another look at this. Just a slight tickle there from Keith Arthurton. That Callis usually swings the ball away from the right hander, which means it's coming into the left hander, and he just allowed this swing to take it off the face of the bat down to fine leg. That was close. I think I would be a little bit disappointed if I was the bowler. Swinging again, this ball has pitched in line, has straightened, and has certainly hit him in line. That was close. I think Keith Atherton will consider himself very lucky there. Hitting him below the roll as well. Perhaps Steve Dunn thought he got that right leg outside off stump. I doubt it. No oh, big appeal there. That's got to be close. It's a little swinger. Yes, he's given him. He's given him. Justice is done. Justice is done. 
He's got one right, Steve Dunn. That one did uh, straighten down the line again. He thought about it long and hard, and eventually he put his finger up. Well, that is the de delivery that Jack Callis specializes in. The ball that goes away from the right and comes into the left hander. Once it pitches in line and straightens, there is no way that you can give that not out. That is hitting below the roll again in line with mid stump. Steve Dunn took quite a long time in giving it, but certainly that's the right decision. So 193 for five, and uh, that certainly was good bowling by Callis. Uh, these two have got some shine on this ball. They've got it swinging. Oh, ball, that's zero ball. Two big appeals for LBW. The first one was turned that's down, low. but uh, this one, well, umpire done thought about it long and hard. Look at that seam, bolt upright. It straightens down the line, hits him uh, way below the roll, and uh, the umpire after. Oh, look at Callis. He keeps asking. He keeps asking, and at last he gives him. So, there we are. That is a big relief for Callis and for South Africa. Arthurton out, umpire done making the decision. In the commentary box now, Barry Richards and Jeff Boycott. This could be runs, it'll be two. Not quite timed, not straight off the middle. Enough to beat the infield. He's looking for two again here. I don't think he'll get it here. That's it. Get off strike. Give it back to Hooper. It's a clever thing. And again looking for two, but it won't happen. Derek Crooks is just too quick. That's the end of the over. And that's well struck. There won't be uh, more than one. And that's a good throw. It's hit the bat, so they won't take another one. 200 for the West Indies. He'll have to be quick, yeah, but he's picked the right fielder. Mike Rindle just slow off the mark and he didn't pick it up. It's well bowled, they're running on a misfield, but they'll get home. Beautiful shot. Classical cover drive from Carl Hooper. He doesn't come better than that. just opened the face a little bit there used this timing that I've talked about he's such an elegant player textbook what's the face just sort of open there it is mm, that was an ordinary shot from Phil Simmons we have to hurry here Yeah, he'll settle for that. He don't mind that. It's a question of whether uh, West Indies can get that total up to 280 or 290. Simmons and he's got one off the middle. I'm not sure they should have six in the ring, but they have. They were probably hoping for a wicket. It didn't happen. Phil Simmons has got enough of the bat on it, straight over the top. Tempted slower ball from Jacques Cullis. And down the ground it goes. And now we have the men out. I think you've got to put the men out. You've got to cut off the boundaries. We've done a lot of hard work. Oh, don't give him width. Out. Brilliantly caught by guess who? 
just slashed it away, trying to hit it hard again, Phil Simmons. And all he's done is hit it straight to John T. Rhodes. Well, he ought to catch one, buddy. He's had three chances today. Just slipped off the face, this. Gave him width, but it slipped off. He didn't go where he wanted. Yeah, they come very quick there. You've got to be a good athlete at backward point. Jacobs immediately off the mark. It's a single off the last ball. Oh, there's a Could problem. Sorry, Jeffrey, we all got excited there. And uh, Ridley Jacobs really looking for a run that wasn't on. I think if that had been John, he'd have been out. Looks, so he picks it up, and he's a long way away. But uh, he can only feel in one position, can John? Just a single. I think he's got a little bit of a problem as uh, Ridley Jacobs in the turning. Bit of a problem with his foot there. Just drifting down the leg side, didn't try and hit it too hard, just helped it on its way. Good shot. Well, Hans's idea was right. He was trying to get a full sort of Yorker leg stump, but he just saw us drifting outside the pads at full toss. And uh, it's a good player, is Carl Hooper. Seven overs to go then, 219 for six, and there's the scorecard. Philo Wallace, didn't he play well? Five sixes, absolutely magnificent lock, knock. Chanderpaul played quite well, played a silly shot to get out, and uh, of course, Kyle Hooper. Much will depend on him for these last few overs. Yeah. And just the one. Yeah. You won't be unhappy with that, Jack Callis. Just the single. Derek Crooks, he's very quick too. Yeah. He's tried to pull and I'll have to hurry, but uh, judge it well, Carl Hooper. He realised the fielders couldn't get in as quick. Hoops has got to get most of the runs. Get a couple of big old whiz that might get up there, then it becomes competitive. But uh, you were thinking, unless something disastrous happens, that 250 to 60 is not really going to be enough. And he's lucky there off the inside edge. He's looking for two, but he won't get it. Just the single again. And at times with uh, Wallace in, they've threatened a lot, but uh, this is not a, an especially big total. And again, well bowled. Slower delivery. shot beautifully placed he knows where the gaps are and he's just opening the face of the bat and a great piece of feeling too from pat simcox he realizes every run counts well, 
magnificent from Rhodes. We sit that one away down towards square leg. Will it get to the fence? Don't think so. It's going to be cut off down there. Jacobs is no mug with the bat. He's contributed heavily for Antigua and Shield Cricket. Yes, so um, Jacobs, his career, 11 matches, an average of 14. Hooper on strike now, though, and he's on 49. Good point, Jonty Rhodes never looked as if he was going to do anything other than catch that one. He is rock solid, isn't he? It went flying to him at backward point, and he caught it as if he was playing a little game of cricket in the backyard. Well, this is a huge blow for the West Indies. I think Hooper was trying to hit it over extra cover. It went straight to Jonty Rhodes. He's not going to miss too many. He's already taken a very good catch to dismiss Phil Simmons. And that's another one. So Raul Lewis um, is the new batsman. He's out there because of uh, a catch by Jonty Rhodes at backward point. Yes, he was looking to try and hit it over extra cover. There was a gap there in the outfield. Only managed to find Jonty Rhodes. Well, that's got to be quite close. Or was there some bat in that? No, he's given him. Callis has struck again. What a tournament he's having. Callis now 4 for 25 of almost six overs and South Africa having started well they then let it slip a little bit boy but they're right back in it now they're looking good yes he's a very underrated medium pacer that one came back a long way but he was playing right off the back foot by Steve Dunn took a long long time and then lifted his finger so all Lewis departs Have a look at that. Jacques Callas. A dot to a one and two wickets, and he's now on a hat trick. The batsman is out there, ready to face Callas. Callas is on his way. King plays it away on the onside. Huge draw goes up. I think they'd love to have seen a hat trick here. The last one that was taken at this level of cricket was taken by Anthony Stewart, the Australian. And uh, that goes back a while. It was against Pakistan. And uh, that was in the season of 96-97. Oh, there's a big appeal there as well. Perhaps slipping down the leg side. Well, Hansi Kronje knew it. That's why the smile on his face. This is always going to go down leg side. But Deflected off the wheelkeeper, wide given by umpire Shepherd. Nice nudge to third man. Will they come back for the second? They better not. Right over the bales. Let's see a lovely evening here in Dhaka. One down to third man. Really quite a, a nice little scene um, at the end of last over. Gives you some idea of how well liked umpire Shepherd is. Look at this chat. Obviously something funny said was said here. And then of course he turns around. Have a look at the laugh on his face. It's uh yeah, so I think uh, it may have had something to do with that LBW. Oh, that's wide, way down the leg side. So Hansi Kronier continuing. This is uh, the 49th over now. He's 
tipped that one away nicely. Just chipped it over the infield. Yes, Hansi Kronio here is bowling plenty of slow deliveries. Commit himself too early. Left-handed into the stumps. That's it. He's got for it, and he's got him. Straight to mid-wicket, and once again, it's Jonty Rhodes in the way. Well, he doesn't drop those. That was uh, struck very firmly, but Jonty Rhodes was in exactly the right position. And so, unfortunately for the West Indies, they've lost another one. Yes, Jacob's not quite getting the elevation he wanted, because the ball was a little, pitched a little closer to him. So it went flat and straight to Jonty Rhodes. Picks up his third catch. West Indies lose another wicket. He'll cut it off, back for the second. So this is the last over now of the West Indian innings. Let's have another look at the dismissal. We've got two good angles on this for you. First of all, that one, and then that really good one of Jonty Rhodes, and you watch how he concentrates here. He's totally focused, always involved with the game. the question it sounded like a nick to me yes he's got him catless well that's five oh and that was clive lloyd earlier in the day he had a big smile on his face that's disappeared career best for Callis. five for 30 and uh, he's only bowled 7.3 overs he's having a wonderful tournament he really is a good cricketer yes he's really turned this match around for south africa Again, right up in the block hole. Did he get an edge? Straight on the boot. That would have uh, hit the leg stump. No doubt about that. The only question was whether he got any bat on it. Callis, an excellent spell. Five wickets for him. Cronier gave him good support too. And I, and I think Hansi Cronier would be pretty happy with his team's effort here. Monday morning, get set for an epic NFL battle with two big games back to back. First up at 3 a.m., the Tennessee Titans are looking to back up as AFC champions, but will need to dig deep to hold off the New York Giants. Then continuing on at 7.15, gridiron legends, the Washington Redskins, take on the informed Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Live and exclusive, an NFL doubleheader beginning at 3 a.m. Monday, Fox Sports 2. When it comes to finding a hoses and fittings company you can count on, it's a jungle out there, unless you call NZ. Only NZ has the greatest range of hoses and fittings from the largest dealer network. Only NZ offer the fastest service from the largest hose doctor fleet. And NZ is always ready with 24-hour load service. Just call NZ. Nobody changes problems like we do. Every Friday night throughout September, Fox Sports continues our commitment to boxing. Oh, sweet right hand! Join us ringside for some of the best fights from America and Europe. From heavyweight explosion to unbeatable title fights. And he is in serious trouble. Plus, world championship kickboxing. Together, they pack a real punch. Every Friday night, only on Fox Sports. Irvin Dillon starting for the West Indies here. They won a leg by. Just wide of that second slip. Carl Hooper, I think, got a little bit of hand on it. But that 
flew off the outside edge. So the first boundary here for the South Africans. Yes, and very fortunate too. Just slanting across the left hand and not getting his foot to the pitch of the ball. It dropped short of Carl Hooper. Very difficult one. It slipped and then just raced away. Edge and okay, it was like the action replay of the previous delivery. This time Hooper got some hand on it, took the pace off. That should be a wide starting wide and the ball going a little wider on its way to Jacobs. Leon King uh, is another man who impressed uh, yesterday in the game against the Indians. In fact, both these bowlers, uh, Dylan and King, bowl well in tandem. Dylan, the fielder. Nicely timed. Chase here for Lewis. But the ball will win. So Cullinan gets his first boundary. Still gets two. Chandra Paul, the fielder, shies at the stumps, but uh, the batsman comfortably home. That's a fine shot. That'll be another boundary. Didn't try and hit it too hard, just eased into it. 21 for no loss. More runs here for Cullinan. Another boundary. Well, poor old Mervyn Dillon. He's just finished an over and he's, he's got the chase on. And it's beautifully timed by Cullinan. Just waited for it on that occasion. Let it go past him. Ball still hard, still new. Skids on. Watch how late he plays this. Straight into the gap. Acceleration of the bat with the wrists. And Mervyn Dillon, he didn't have far to go, but he couldn't cut it off. Again in the air. The chase for the man, a third man, that'll be another four. Just like Mary Richards said a little while earlier, and Rindley quite prepared to throw his bat at anything wide and throw his bat hard. Makes it really difficult when somebody's going to do this. Foot nowhere near it, just the old swing of the bat as hard as you can. Nicely played. It's again into the gap. Two more runs here for Riddle. So Carl Hooper being introduced into the attack. We just expected it. He's an experienced bowler. We saw how South Africa used Pat Simcox earlier in the day. He bowled wonderfully well in the first 15 overs. And again. Look for two. Not to hurry, they'll get it. That's put away by Rindle. Picked the length up quickly, rocked back onto the back foot, and crashed it through the covers. And that's poor bowling from Carl Hooper. Really is slow wicket look how much time he gives to uh, swing the arms going away far too short 
just sat up there and Rindle didn't miss out. He put it away. Again shot and again put away. That's a bad delivery. And it got the treatment it deserved. a great shot that is a great shot it's another boundary for Cullinan that brings up the 50 for South Africa oh this is Sachin Cullen really is a great shot from Cullinan look at this he just gets inside and whips it away straight off the middle of the bat that is a quality shot not many players can play that shot and time it as well as that very few, very few players that I've seen can do that. Cullinan here is dealing in boundaries. Straight down the ground. Again, taking it on the full. Getting the placement right. Very exciting player to watch when in full flow. The good thing is he doesn't miss out on the bad balls. It was a full toss. Going for the Yorker was Dylan. The right delivery, just a little bit too full, and uh, Cullinan just put it away. The two quicks. Uh, ooh, close. That is close. It was a real desperate dive at the end. Ooh, I wouldn't like to call that. No wonder we're getting a replay, Michael. Well, the West Indians don't look all that excited, Jeffrey. Normally, as you see them celebrating quite a lot. Well, I think this is out. They're definitely out. Well, they'll be excited now. Wait till they see the light go on. There'll be some excitement. Told it. He just looked a desperate dive to me. He really did. Well, and that's giving uh, West Indies a start. Terrific throw and pick up from uh, Keith Atherton, but uh, they were doing so well. There was no need to give West Indies a wicket. Well, surprise, surprise. The new batsman, Mark Boucher. I think we were all very surprised the last time South Africa played and sent him in high in the order. Well, I am even more surprised. I'm not too sure about you, Jeffrey. Well, I can't work it out. The only thing I can think, they put all the names in the hat and they dip the hand in and pick one out. Another quick run. Well, they made it quite safely this time. straight near Carl Hooper. Certainly has bowled a lot better to the right-handers than to the left-handed Mike Rindle. Ah! And he's gone, I think. Definitely. Well done, Carl Hooper. He certainly has been bowling a lot better to the right-handers. I'm not too sure if that was called a wide by umpire Shepard. I know it went a long way down the leg side. Well, that was big spin. Really turned and bounced a little bit. He was stranded a long way down. Yeah. And that's the difference now. Two wickets down, 60 for two, I said. Game on. Well, I think we're back to normal, so now. Jack Callis, the new batsman. Why he wasn't sent earlier on, I'm not too sure. Oh, that was another close call. Carl was certainly getting a bit of turn. Now, the game will probably change. Hooper fancies his chances. Turning the ball, new batsman in. But Ramsey to then 70 for three. Oh. Certainly is turning the ball quite a lot, Carl Hooper. Oh, that's a very good wicket keeping. I said that Cal 
race the right and the other right hand is to come we'll have to get the lap sweep out if cooper's going to turn it that much double shot by jack palace hitting with the spin Irvin Dillon preventing them from getting back for the second. In the air, just over his head. Racing out towards the boundary. And one of the quicker fielders on this West Indies team to prevent them from getting free. Square. Who runs competently? Drops. That's why he was placed there, Brian Lara. Not for the first time today we have seen another a catch go down. came at him quite quick Carl Hooper bowling a lot better to the right hander that man Arthur again and I think this is the contest within a contest now the informed batsman there it is it's top edge but I think it will fall safely. Pelly was lucky there, Michael. As soon as it went up, I thought it's gone straight up. It just had enough carry on it to clear the two fielders, and then it just kept on running away. Watch it go up. This is a top edge. This is not the middle. That's the uh, top part of the bat. It's gone up, but it's enough carry there, and it just keeps on going. And the new bowler. Bill Simmons. That is for. That's what you're talking about, Jeffrey. Well, yes. Having seen him quite a bit, like you, Michael, seen a lot of West Indies cricket in the winter, and then we see a lot of county cricket. He plays for Leicestershire in um, county cricket in England. He is one of the kind of filling bowlers, a batsman who bowls, but I've never been too confident of him in recent times. He kind of, he kind of bowls all over the place. That's certainly not the length nor the line. Two runs off the last delivery are very good over for South Africa. And to apply, and he's getting the shots away nicely. It's a bit too short again. So you've got to get it up there, a little further up. Rindle 36, Callus 14. And whack. That's over the top. That's a good shot. Beautifully played. Callis, wonderful striker of the ball. There may have been seven inside the circle. They won't stay there for long if he keeps doing this. Yeah, they won't stay there for another ball. Beautifully played from Jacques Callis. He knew where to hit it, and he's hit it beautifully. Simmons is not happy. Why would he be? This is not good keeping. Mind you, he didn't expect it to turn that much. It's turned a long way. Look at Ridley Jacobs. Moved very late indeed. When you're keeping and the ball disappears from view, you really have to make sure you get down the leg side. Oh, he's 
gone for that one. Top edge, and it's beaten the short third man. Well, things are starting to go in South Africa's favour here a little bit. That was aimed at, uh, well, I think it was aimed at mid-wicket, and it ended up going to slip. The Hooper, who's bowled six overs, uh, he's taken one for 29. He's going to continue with his off-spinners. Shy at the stumps and over the top of the bales. Nicely taken there by Hooper. right off the meat of the bat that may go all the way yes it has Callis is placing his sweep shot perfectly the man was square he played it slightly fine great shot Jack Callis got the foot into line waited till the ball turned and then hit it behind square just delayed the shot and hit it where the man wasn't and that's very good batting indeed superbly timed that man is much squarer than that Watch how he gets the foot down, waits for it, and hits it behind square. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed it. That's the 50 partnership. Instead of getting one quick one, they'll end up getting three. The West Indies are beginning to feel the pressure here. The South African side is starting to turn it on now. was uh, a very dangerous shot indeed much fuller and much quicker I saw him play one and over ago he really played it well look how full that one is just got the under edge of the bat no oh, Jacques Gullis was very lucky indeed there he thought it had gone past Kyle Hooper he just shot out his hand and if he'd picked it up cleanly the first time, just bobbled out of his hand. He had to go and fetch it, and Callis, in the end, was quite comfortably home. That one played straight down the ground to mid-off. They'll get one here and settle for it. It takes the score to 116 for two. Short delivery down to square leg. This will be cut off. So it's that sort of delivery that uh, every now and again gets uh, Simmons into trouble. Short, it could have been dispatched square, and had it been, it would have been four. And again, that's a good shot, but just the one. strike at the moment feel pretty widespread oh he's got him caught and bowled slightly slower delivery he's foxed him that's a big wicket callus was looking like the danger man in this side he's been playing very well and simmons having bowled some loose deliveries has managed to wheedle him out well, a bit of concentration lapse here from jacques callus not a particularly dangerous delivery it did bounce a little bit though for phil simmons Jack Cullis looking to hit it away on the leg side, got it high up on the bat and an easy catch for Simmons. So South Africa lose their third wicket, 118 for three. So Hansi Cronier comes to the crease. He really has kept him well. And this would cap off his week if he were to win this game. South Africa ahead of the West Indies after 22 overs. And Simmons will continue. He's the one who picked up the wicket of Jacques Carlos in the last over. Carlos was looking good. Plenty of gaps on that onside. They look for Tuya and should get it easily. I think you might right. I think he might like to um, get rid of the left-hander first so that Lewis is bowling his leg spinners to the right-handers and he can bowl actually over or around the wicket. He bowls around the wicket into the bowler's foot marks. We've already seen Hooper turn it a lot. Simmons has turned it quite a bit. He's at loft spinners off cutters. So Lewis should turn it quite a lot. 
And I've seen him bowl well at right handers. This game's not over. I know I back to South Africa. I thought they might make it. I don't think this game's over. on the pads here, a loud shout. Pitched outside, would have hit probably, but he pitched outside. Little off cutter, which is going away from the left-hander. Plenty of photographers from all around the world here to cover this event. And that's gone fine, and we'll go for four. That really puts pressure on the bowler when the first ball goes to the boundary. It's good cricket by Rendell. He's moved to 49 with that single. that was really skillful just bounced on him didn't try and flash at it just because it was short and bounced just use a little bit of class there to just run it like a little late cut for Riddle 49 callous good hand there with 37 he's had a great tournament five wickets today again Tronia looking to improvise It's a lovely shot. You won't get a boundary. If they run hard, they might just be three here. The fact there is. Well, Rian King just went off the field. And look at his boots. He's got one new one, one old one. He went to change one of the boots. Obviously, they were pinching him or hurting him or rubbing him somewhere. Oh, he's back onto bowl. He'll have to hurry here, and he's gone. Keith Arterton has finally hit the stumps, and isn't he delighted? He's very quick across the turf. He shies at the stumps on many occasions and misses them, but not on that last one. So Rindle's dismissed here for 49, and West Indies have picked up an important wicket. Well, that is a big wicket as well. It's so important to get these run outs. This one, Rindle seems set. Oh, he's miles out. There was a stop and a start, and he was never going to make it if there was a direct hit. This Fox Sports Golf Calendar is proudly brought to you by The Australian. The LPGA Tour continues with the World Championship of Women's Golf. The President's Cup tees off on October 20th, and the US PGA Tour continues with the National Car Rental Classic. This Fox Sports Golf Calendar was proudly brought to you by The Australian. There's things that you're going to see that, that you can't unsee. They get in your head and they stay there. So Chonty Rhodes comes out to the middle. South Africa have lost their fourth wicket here. Just a little while earlier. Grindle, who was looking good, was dismissed in this fashion. Well, they always say, he who hesitates is lost. And that's what happened. There was a stop and a start. definitely going for them is their great depth in their batting another partnership here of just 35 or 40 runs will ease the pressure a 
That's nicely played by Rhodes. He waited on it so that he could get the placement going. He wanted three, but rightly sent back by Cronier. Shot here for a catch behind. He's gone. He's been given. Simmons has struck again. John T. Rhodes has been dismissed. And look at the West Indian players. They know they have a chance now. Wicket number five gone for South Africa. Well, I was saying the wickets. It looks as if he's opening the face a little bit. Yeah. Not very smart when you first come in against an off spinner or off cutter. Oh, that's a big wicket now. Well, it's got him four runs, but it looked a really airy fairy shot. He just sort of wafted at that ball. And it's a lucky four, 141 for five. <laughs> so South Africa, maybe 12 runs ahead of the West Indies at this stage, but they've lost two extra wickets. That could be crucial. From South Africa's point of view, the good thing is that they've still got their captain out there. now for Dale Benkenstein to make a mark on it. He's oh, got it through. That's racing away. I think that's going to make it. Every run will be cheered and counted by supporters of each side. 150 for five. and absolutely nothing in it one run and a couple of wickets so the West Indies were better placed at this stage of their innings South Africa have lost uh, a couple of extra wickets the question is can they keep the pressure on the South Africans can they continue to keep the pressure on yes, that one's short as well not easy to bowl those leg spinners from around the wicket Will they look for two or settle for one? I think Cronier happy just to take the single. Oh, that's close. Yeah, hit him outside the line. He got his uh, front foot forward quickly, just outside the line. Let's have a look at it. Seems as if he was trying to shuffle across the off stump to try and get the ball in line with his body so that he could play it onto the onside. Oh. Wide and runs. He's a long way across as well. He's got that one down the fine leg. They'll come back for two. He's got a very upright stance on Zikron here, hasn't he? Gets his bat off the ground. And, uh, his eyes are as wide as you can imagine. Uh, comfortably 
be pushed away that time on the onside. Well, there's that uh, reverse sweep again. And uh, it's thundered into the fence. It's quite incredible how successful the South Africans have been with this reverse sweep. They've got it away regularly. Every now and again, uh, put it into practice. It's not as if they do it all the time. It's just every now and again. Jack Callis did it quite successfully in the semi-finals. Noel Crony plays it very beautifully. Once again, off the middle of the bat to fine leg. Good shot, right into the gap. That's running away. He won't get this one, I don't think. Oh, yes, he will. He's got all oh, good effort, but no. Good effort, but he didn't make it. Over the line he went, and the Pepsi sign has gone all over the place. And the boundary as well. Good form there from Mervyn Dillon. Good sprinting form. Knees up, but he couldn't make it. This is close. No, much too late. We know what it, the difference is between hitting the stumps and catching the ball and then carrying them onto the stumps. And that one swept away. Going down towards fine leg. This will be cut off. Cronier, though, will come back for two. score at just over four runs per over should not be difficult always oh, hit that one that's four that's a very good shot he really does play some interesting shots Nancy Cronier down the wicket on that occasion all the fieldsmen up on the offside and he caressed it away over the top of backward point Square oh, is a misfield. It's little misfields like that that just relieve the pressure. He stop as it. Will it carry? Man coming in from square leg. Just not quite carrying. Also bought the 50 partnership, and this will be a boundary. They all play the reverse sweep. But none better than Hansi Kornia. And it's no accident. They practice it. It's very much a feature of their cricket. They're very innovative. And nearly all the batsmen learn to play this. Get into position very quickly, protection from the pads, hit with the spin, and roll the wrists. Perfectly played. And once again, this time, he swept it fine. He's reverse swept it fine. He'll only get a single. single they look for two Benkenstein wants it and will get it Wallace was right back on the boundary so that's good cricket by the young man and there we have the worms still pretty close but uh, I think the uh, West Indies lost their fifth wicket Nancy Cronier just uh, 
beginning to give South Africa the ascendancy there. You see the West Indies lost their fifth wicket in the 38th over, and that's when they really lost their way. The lower order didn't do anything. South African lower order, I think, probably would uh, back themselves. Stein has done a very good job here for his side. He's played the ball into the gaps. He's worked the ball around. He's given his captain as much of strike as possible. See, that's a pretty good strike rate, especially when you come in a situation like this. Nancy Cronier knows it's very important to uh, keep ticking over the strike and he knows there's a, a little gap at square leg so watch him move across here get right inside the ball to square leg he knows the gaps there so single to end the over 199 for five so one run short of the 200 run mark south africa They'll get it. Nice shot through the offside. We'll get two for it. It's two or two for five. It's Hooper into his final over. This is where the young man has been very impressive, Bankenstein. So another single here to end the over. 40 overs are gone. South Africa comfortably placed now. 205 for five. to use his feet. Again, the reverse sweep. Again, it's out of here. This field will give Cronier his half century. It's been a really fine innings under pressure. He's kept his cool and he's taken South Africa now into a winning position. comes out to the middle at the fall of Benkenstein's wicket. Just too full, gets it on the bottom of the bat. Initially looking to go forward, try to rock back, didn't get over it. So he's off the mark now, Crooks. signal to see if Crook's got any bad to it. He's very quick. 
when it comes to running between the wickets. Comfortably getting through there. looking to improvise and look at Crooks again very good call obviously was backing up nicely yes they're going along nicely now 222 for six so well and it's just a question of finishing it off so 20 to win off 30 balls that's the run rate of four per over so they need four runs per over and uh, South Africa will win they look as if uh, they're quite happy to do it in quick singles I really think Lara needs to do something here he just needs to bring these fieldsmen in a little bit. They've got to stop the ones, try and force a boundary or two, get them to take a chance. Yeah, I agree with you, Tony. He's got to bring him in against Crooks anyhow. He's the uh, he's the newer player or the lesser player. Yes, uh, this is interesting. Uh, he comes and tries to kick this with the outer side of his foot. And of course it goes that way. giving Arthurton an over or two. He's uh, had some success. Well, that's a full toss down the leg side and uh, that is a wide. side field just one in comes the throw and Laura behind the stumps at the end of the over 232 for six so they need 14 now of 24 the West Indies need wickets that's short it's pulled away there's a man back there just a single well this tournament now is uh, drawing to its climax have been, um, well, it's been a tough contest really the West Indians haven't quite got enough runs they needed a few more Laura just uh, patting his bowler on the shoulder I think he's probably decided now they're going to bring the fieldsmen in they just cannot allow them to keep getting singles there just three overs to go he may have left this just a little bit late so what he's done is he's brought a man in close on the onside. So uh, there's, a, there's a man in close on the onside here. And uh, a man here as well. So one on each side. Oh, there's 
that reverse sweep again and it's into the gap and it's four well every time they do something the south africans grab an initiative and uh, almost grab them by the collar and do something in response and uh, that was a very effective one well you've got to take the hats off to them uh, south africans they practice the re reverse sweep it's not something that comes naturally to most players I just think Lewis should have bowled around the wicket at the start and he should have bowled it a little bit quicker. It's very, very slow, this leg spin. That's a good shot. It's going to bounce once for four into the fence it goes. It's just about over now. The South Africans have grabbed this match by the scruff of the neck and they're about to take away the World's International Cup. Five to win off 21 balls and they're finishing it off in great style. A couple of consecutive boundaries. in the back of the commentary box has got a big smile on his face we can't find michael holding that one whacked away on the offside they'll come back for two will they no uh, yes back for the second well it's been a great tournament for south africa right from the word go they've played very positive determined cricket they've been brilliant in the field Cronier's captaincy once again has been inspirational. Jacques Callis's performance has been outstanding as well. And the bowlers too have all chipped in. One thinks of Simcox this morning, given the new ball, bowled an unbelievably good spell. So two runs now to win from 20 balls. Crooks on strike. So one ball to go in the over. Two to win. And the crowd want it, uh, want it over and done with now. And he's obliged. He's whacked that one away to square leg for four. South Africa have won the world's international cup in great style the ball has thundered into the fence down there at square leg and the crowd are on their feet they've been absolutely marvelous uh, the people of dakar and they've seen some great cricket south africa win by four wickets with three overs to spare Westin has had an opportunity to post a, a pretty good total. In the end, it was competitive, but it wasn't special. Uh, they and so South Africa only had to make around about 250. They kept losing wickets, but they kept chipping runs at a fast enough pace to always be above the run rate. Hansi Kronia there going to collect the big one. Magnificent performance by his team to lift the Wills International Cup. Receives the trophy from the Honourable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Her Excellency Sheikh Hasina. A terrific performance by South Africa. very heavy and uh, I tell you what it's, uh, it's wonderful to hold it we've certainly worked out over the last week and I'm sure the boys are very delighted to have this trophy now a tight match today yeah I think um, I made it a lot tighter than what it should have been by running out Mike Rindle um, we were playing so well up front there uh, after restricting them to a really good score and then a good start by uh, Mike Rindle and Daryl Cullinan and Jack Callis played well as well and then uh, just had a little bit of a hiccup in the middle but then Dale Benkinson and I pulled it back together but you must have been worried at one stage when uh, Philo Wallace was uh, blasting the ball to all corners of the park. <laughs> he certainly has played very well. Um, we've got a series coming up against the West Indies and, uh, you know, we've got to make sure we know where to ball at the big man. <laughs> Daryl Cullinan reckons he should be in the boxing ring, <laughs> such a big man. Yes, he's got the build of a boxer now. Playing in Bangladesh, have you enjoyed it? The crowds have been terrific. The crowd has been absolutely unbelievable, I must admit. Uh, it's really enjoyed playing here. Um, first time that we've been here as a South African team and we hope we get an invitation to come back here. We've certainly enjoyed it. 
Well, many congratulations, Hansi. Fantastic tournament and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thanks very much, Rob. So Hansi Kronia there walking away with the trophy and the winner's check. And that, I'm, that, I'm afraid, is all we have from the presentation area. It's back to Tony Gregg. Thank you, Ravi. Yeah, those South Africans played well, didn't they? Fantastic performance they, they put up, and we uh, can only reiterate what they've said down there, that uh, the crowds have been absolutely wonderful. A big thank you, by the way, to everyone in Dakar and into, in Bangladesh, and, uh, of course, to the winners, the South Africans. They've uh, played superbly well, and they deserve that trophy and, indeed, the check.